my topic for uh, my topic for you guys today is uh, microservices, and uh, I'm going to give you guys a broad overview of what it is and um, how it differs from like other forms of software architecture. So this diagram right here sort of represents like the evolution of software um, architecture over the last two decades. Um, the so-called monolith uh, architecture style is what we're doing right now. I guess it's it's a, it's it's essentially like building every application as one unit, and then um, um, you know if there's a small change that uh, change that needs to be applied to uh, one small part of uh, the application, it has to be deployed again. Um, so that is uh, very different from what is actually applied in um, you know enterprise settings. So uh, Service-oriented architecture, or SOA for short, um, is like a looser and less rigid form. And um, I'm going to use like a like a like an analogy to try and explain this. So, so let's say that we're in this city um, with four different modes of transportation. You can either get to work with um, you know with a ferry, on a bus, subway, or just a regular taxi. So like these are pretty convenient and like you get to work on time and it's awesome. But um, what if I decide to change my name or if I or, or if I decide to change like my address? Uh, and um, <clears throat> all of these different systems work uh, or store information separately. So uh, what I would have to do technically is like let's say if the uh, if the ferry sort of stores all of its stuff on a main, um, on a mainframe computer and um, the subway stores, um, you know, um, all of its information in files. I would have to call, you know, both of these different departments up, send a letter, you know, call them up, send them an email, whatever. So um, it would it would just take a really long time, and it would be like just, I mean, there would just, I, I, I would I would have to keep track of which department uh, uses, um, you know, different formats, and it would just get really complicated and frustrating <clears throat> for me to do that. So. What if there was one place I could go and just, you know, sort of update everything and, you know, like that would be great. So that's essentially a transit pass. So what's great with, so this is sort of analogous to what happens in um, enterprise IT in large um, enterprise firms. Um, this is what SOA looks like. So SOA is like the transit pass. Um, and um, let's say, like, you know, in your company you have like a bunch of, Different systems. You have an ERP system. You have a CRM system. Um, you know, an accounting software, and they all communicate with each other. Um, so let's say if you want to change one small thing in your in your ERP system, you don't have to like sort of change everything in your entire application. You can just change whatever is necessary and then deploy that again. So that saves a lot of time. You don't have to waste. Um, you know, you don't have to like redeploy, and it just Convenient. Uh, so that's what S uh, so that's what um, SOA is. But the topic of my um, of my talk is uh, microservices. So microservices actually takes this a step further, and it's essentially a subset of um, uh, um, of service oriented architecture principles. So uh, microservices is what um, you know companies like Amazon, Netflix, uh, PayPal, and Jilt have been using, um, and it's um, and the idea or the philosophy is that it's um, it's building a single application as a suite of um, you know smaller services um, that are built I mean that are built around like business capabilities. So um, like there is no centralized management of uh, these these services. And uh, when I mean business capabilities, I mean you know usually I mean I'll get to this later in my talk, but usually um, you know. Right now, we've been focusing uh, on just the technology layer. Like, for example, we like for our capstone projects, we've been assigning, or for Stackstore as well, we were assigning people for the database, for the UI layer. But um, when it comes to um, you know larger companies like Amazon, they actually structure their teams around you know things like um, you know payment forms, reviews. Uh, so that's I mean that's pretty interesting. So. If you go to Amazon.com, for example, and you type in like Nike shoe, um, you'd probably get around 170 individual applications getting triggered uh, from that search, from pricing to images, um, you know, 
like all of them combining to give you this overarching experience. Um, so essentially, these services uh, are com like sort of exist as out of process, um, you know, executable files. So they actually communicate with one uh, with one another via um, HTTP. So think of it as like different files just existing elsewhere, and then um, executing it like like whatever was needed to be executed, and then communicating that to different services. Um, so that's what so that's what this is. And I'm going to try and define um, um, what people have said are the three defining components of any microservices architecture, um, which are these three right up, up, uh, right up here. And the first one is, uh, which is probably the most important, it's um, you know, just components. Trying to understand um, you know, what components really are. Uh, so components in the context of, of, of services and in the context of um, microservices in general, um, means that like individual services can be replaced and upgraded um, independently um, independently of like other um, you know applications so you don't so um, with the so um, like going back to the uh, subway and ferry example if I wanted to change one service I could just do it without influencing the rest of the program I wouldn't have to sort of redeploy again uh, and it's like plugging in a new stereo. It's like if your stereo needs repair or if it needs to be upgraded, I can just like plug in a new stereo and we're good to go. We don't have to, you know, change the entire like sound system. Um, so, yeah, I think um, this is. I mean, like to like to truly understand how microservices work. This is this is a crucial thing to get uh, and. Secondly, I mean, I mentioned this already. It's basically like uh, trying to put everything around uh, this this idea of business operations um, instead of focusing just on uh, technology layers. Um, I think that I mean many monolith uh, applications, like how we've been. I mean, so I mean, so I mentioned this. So how how we've been technically doing it is literally just going layer by layer versus feature by feature. I think when you get to a larger organization, you probably want to manage individual features. And that's probably of greater importance than, um, uh, than just having teams like, you know, just for one generic stack. So teams at Amazon, for example, have like different capabilities. You know, like they have people for the user experience. Uh, there are people, you know, working on the databases. Um, so it's like one team would probably have around like 10 to 15 people, and they would just have like a bunch of skills, um, and they all have direct access to the uh, end consumer, which is cool. And finally, um, every one of these services. So, for example, um, if I if I work on the reviews team at Amazon, and if someone else works on uh, the support team uh, at Amazon. Um, we could have like completely different data models. We could have like completely different uh, conceptual models, even though we're just handling the same information. So the data can be different. The type of database can be different. Like I could use like a SQL database, and then someone else could use a MongoDB database. Just, I mean, like microservices allows for that flexibility. Uh, this can actually also be a problem, um, and. There are a few trade-offs which um, are pretty significant if you think about, um, you know, like flexibility versus overall cost. Uh, making, um, you know, HTTP requests between different services can get really expensive. Uh, it can slow down your application a lot. But what um, pro I mean, like what, what what people have done in the past is sort of um, use asynchronicity to solve this problem. Uh, they've they've batched a bunch of HTTP requests, and um, you know, essentially, like if you use asynchronicity and and batching, your closest. I, I mean, like the slowest you'd get would be the slowest um, request in your in your um, uh, in your batch. Uh, but you know, it's 
it's hard to think of it that way, and like, you know, it's it's hard to program as well. Oh shit. Uh, questions? <laughs> no, that was literally the last slide. <laughs> so yeah. Um, do you guys have any questions? Oops. Oh, did you guys see that? Um, so Conway's law is basically, um, so it was, a, it was a theory put out by, I think his name is Michael Conway or whatever. Um, he, so he said that businesses uh, should, like, I, mean, if, I mean, if any company is designing um, a software, it should design it around um, the communication structure of that business. So, um, so essentially, you know, um, like if you have uh, a, a, like a like a reviews team, okay, and if you have a support team, and if you have like a, some some other team, um, bit like I mean, like you should be designing um, microservices, and you should be designing uh, like the organization of your teams based on that um, based on that structure. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks.